The Midlands local lines funneled about 8,000 wagons into Toten every day. And here their locos left them. Then a shunter pushed them one by one to the brow of a small man-made hump from which each wagon could then roll downhill into the yard on its own. Hump control was the network's nerve centre. This tunnel, it was polished with furniture polish, wax furniture polish, and the man who operated it had a duster in his hand. And the slightest bit of dust and he'd be wiping it over. The floor was polished, and we had a, the paint was new, the windows obviously had a little bit smashed, but it was an absolute pristine building, it really was. These glittering lights illustrated a remarkably simple system. The trains would arrive from the collieries, and the signalman at Sandy Acre, he, the box just at the top there, he would uh, let the train come into one of these rows. As it came onto this um, section here, it would show occupied. So that was a train ready for shunting. The shunters would go out to the cabin from across there and walk up, release the locomotive. And the engine would run round to the other end of the train. The shunter would walk up with a board um, and he would chalk the wagons for the destination. Each destination had a numbered siding. Number eight was Derby. Number 22 was Acton. Number 20 was Lloyd's. There were 37, two fans. On the right-hand side, it was called the West Yard. And on the left-hand side, it was called the East Yard. Then, when he wanted to start the shunt, he would have a switch here, shunt slow, shunt fast, and all these were various controls. And he would turn that, and then the shunting engine would start to propel the train, and the train would come up to the hump, and the wagon would run down the hump and into the sidings. Although built in 1901, the hump was still the best way to move unpowered wagons. In actual fact, it was very, very steep. A wagon could accelerate to 25 miles an hour between the top of the hump here and the uh, points right at the bottom of the road. But the hump was only as efficient as the stick men breaking the wagons. The frequent and sometimes fatal accidents led to delays. So in 1949, British Railways replaced the stick men with hydraulic clamps on the inside of the rails. Controlled from the top of a trackside tower, these clamps slowed the wagons by squeezing the wheels that passed through them. Well, the, the skill was manipulating the brakes. If the road was empty, you just gave a slight brake application so that it just rubbed it, and then the, the wagons used to run down into the yard. If the road was completely or nearly full, you give a bit more severe application and um, that slowed the wagons down so that they just trickled inside to their various rounds. Throughout the furious 50s, Toten shunted a wagon over the hump every 20 seconds. It was frowned upon if you didn't make uh, 1,250 wagons in this year over this hump. The traffic was constant all the while and you hear the wagons banging into the road all day. And it would be Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Didn't matter, Toten was always working. And on a New Year's Eve, all the drivers used to open the whistles and, was, and the old area would chime with all the different uh, locomotive whistles. Toten couldn't close or London would have no coal, Stoke no clay, Mrs. Smith, no nylons. Without Toten, Britain would have shut down. When British Railways was created in 1947, nationalisation was seen as industrial progress. Yes, goods wagons, Mrs. Smith. Just a few of the 1,124,812 owned by British Railways, which, if they were all laid end to end, would stretch from Weymouth to Wadi Halfa. 